Sagittarius, hello beautiful soul, how are you? My name is Alicia, welcome, welcome back. This is Empath Tarot, where spirit's messages directly correlate with being highly sensitive here on planet Earth. Now in this reading, we're gonna pull some messages that are gonna help uncover any money or love blocks you may be experiencing at this time. If there is a certain amount of money you would like to manifest into your life or that special someone, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. If you're interested in receiving a personal reading with myself and spirit, all of the details will be down in the description box below, along with my husband. If you haven't yet, check him out. He is over at 70 Tarot. And be sure to stick around until the end of this reading. We're going to be pulling a final message from your angels. Now let's dive right in. So first things first, we want to remind you beautiful soul. That is whatever you focus on, you become a genius at. So some of us are geniuses at living in poverty. Some of us are geniuses at bad relationships. Some of us are geniuses at, you know, living in a unhealthy state, but it's not because you are that it's because your thoughts have been focused and built the momentum with that. So whatever we focus on, it builds momentum, builds momentum. And then we feel whenever we're building momentum with that thing, that's the thing we're focused on. That's the momentum we're building. So then when a situation shows up, we are, you know, there's not as much resistant to that thing if we build momentum on it. That's why we say if you deliberately put your focus into things that you want to build and grow in your life, you will receive inspired inspiration for that thing and take action on that thing. But what we can see here is that there has been a lack of inspiration, a lack and a sense of clarity for yourself. And this has caused a lot of fear and a lot of sleepless nights. So we want to remind you that adversity and challenges are part of the game of life. But remember, it's not the fall. It's always the comeback. It doesn't matter if you are going through a divorce, bankruptcy, lost someone special to you, lost the house, you know, whatever it may be, whatever hardships you're facing, know this, it is not going to last forever. It's, it was implemented for a reason, not the things that happen, uh, here in this game of life happen for us. If you've lost someone special in your heart, they are never gone. We're going to see them yet again when we cross over and have our death experience ourself, right? There is no death, right? And we just want to remind you now is the time to open up and instead of fearing and worrying about what is going on, we want you to open up the, the, the portal or build momentum like in the form of curiosity. So you see that live with a childlike sense of wonder, right? So it's about nurturing your inner child and asking yourself, okay, well, what now that I'm here in where I am in my life, what is it that I actually want? Like, what is it that satisfies me the most? Like if I had this thing, I would be satisfied. Maybe it's a car, maybe it's a house, maybe it's success in your business, maybe it's a weight loss. But we want you to not focus on the lack of it. We want you to focus on the most successful outcome of it, you see. So how much money do you wanna make? What kind of car do you wanna own? What's your house look like? What's your body look like? What relationship are you in? Focus on the outcome, detach from how you have to get it, because that's always where we mess things up, right? Us empaths are very emotionally connected and we're very, we're, we're feelers. So we're just thinking like, oh my gosh, I want that so bad. We feel how it would feel. We want it right now, but we have to remember there's a journey to get there. There's a process to get to that end outcome. And all we have to do in that in between, in that meantime, once we've set the outcome of what we want is be living in the present moment so we can feel the impulses that we're called to do because it's through those impulses that we learn and then we jump back on track and we keep moving. Impulse, do that thing, learn some data, go back on track. Impulse, learn that thing, get some data, go back on track. Now, a lot of the times when we go in that impulse, can you see this? Yes, yeah. so we impulse, we jump off track for a little while, we collect data, we go back on, right? And we keep moving forward. Sometimes when that impulse we do doesn't pan out or we don't, we feel like the t energy has come to an end and we're like, okay, this time has come to an end. Let's think of relationship, right? So here's your end goal. I want a relationship that treats me with love, respect. Um, heck, why not? Is rich, you know? Sure, why not? Then you meet someone and they, you know, there's a connection for a little bit at first. There's always going to be because everyone's putting the other person before them. So you feel kind of special. And then that starts to go, right? And it's about recognizing 
there, there may be a collection of data there, right? And then that relationship might fizzle out. There, it, you, that person may not align with what you're looking for, right? And money should never play, by the way, but because you'll be abundant anyway. Money is just a frequency. It just means if someone is rich, it just means that they are open to money. They believe they are worthy of money. That's the only reason why. Any of us walking around without the abundance that we want, without the love or without the money that we want, it's because we don't believe in ourselves. That's the only reason why, beautiful soul. So when you start to build the belief in yourself and the self-confidence, then you have no problem, uh, uh, you know, attracting money and attracting love. If you are lesser than what you think you should be, which is a joke because you're incredible. It's just about what you're choosing to focus on. Remember most of us, all of us are extremely abundant. It's just what we're choosing to focus on. That's the difference. That's it. So if you focus on, again, we're all geniuses, but you might be a genius in poverty or you might be a genius in bad relationships. If that's what you're choosing to focus on, that's going to be what shows up for you. When it's simply put like that, it's like, oh yeah, what am I focusing on? The lack of what I have or the abundance of what I have. Now, most of us are so circumstantial that we're focusing on what is instead of what's possible. And that's why we want you to focus on the outcome of what's possible and maintain that focus. Now, remember, if you're going to be called into different impulses to, uh, to achieve this thing. So you're saying, I want a relationship. You're here. Now you got to live in the moment. And if you're in, if you get an impulse to start working out, work out. If you get an impulse to change your hair, change your hair. If you get an impulse to buy new clothes, buy new clothes, do those things because that's your higher self saying all of this will energetically create a higher feeling within yourself to create more belief, which is going to create then more validation in your outer world of what you believe, which is going to allow you to fully trust in the process and know that all good things are coming to you. You see, most of us are not acknowledging those impulses. Most of us are not acknowledging what we're being called to do because we're living in this fear state. So what will help you is to take time out, spend time in nature, spend time with yourself. But now is the time to not be so reactive and not cling on to anything that you are experiencing. Just use a little discernment right now. Right now, understand that not all things are going to be as they are and they will change. They're slowly changing. So now is a good time just to connect to your art. So how do you create art? How do you feel your best or creating art in a way like we all have a way that we create art and creating art is where you get lost. You're in the flow state. Time is irrelevant. You don't even know what time it is. You're just like, wow, it's, it's hours have passed. For me, it's exercise. I could go out with the intention of doing like 10 minutes and I'm there for like two hours. Like it's just, I get lost with exercise, movement, playing with my body, different positions, stretching, mobility, all kinds of things. And we want you to, know, we want to invite this to you because that's where I connect with spirit. When I'm just free flowing and moving, I'm fully connected. I'll get downloads. I'll always have my notebook with me. I'll write down downloads as I'm moving. So when do you get lost? Where is your art? And if you're telling me you got no art, well, that's the problem right then and there, right? That would be the first step is to reconnect to your higher self. So then you can reconnect to and be in alignment with the joys and the passions and the new adventures and the love and the passion that is what you're here for. Right. The only reason why you wouldn't be receiving these things is because you're not connected to that within yourself, you see. So then you'd have to reconnect to your, you know, your, your, your sense of your childlike sense, right? If you're getting caught up in the, in the adulting world, which adults are so serious. Oh my gosh. We're all so serious out here. We're only so serious because we want things that we think we have to effort. Oh, I got to work really, really, really hard. You really don't. You just have to focus on what you want, build the momentum in terms of like, if I was say, for instance, um, you know, wanted to, you know, um, well, uh, I said this, right. I wanted to, I wanted to be a healer. I wanted to be a coach. I wanted to help people. And I kept saying this, I kept saying this. I want to help. I want to help. I want to help. And spirit, my impulses kept guiding me into waking up early. My impulses kept guiding me into exercising. My impulses kept guiding me into, you know, practicing spiritual practices and taking courses on say Reiki, taking courses on say energy, uh, and, and, and learning and progressing, right. And, and practicing in my spare time. That's my impulses led me to that. And so I followed those impulses and I took the Reiki course, but I, I didn't become certified because I took, I did what I needed to do. I learned what I needed to learn. I didn't feel the need to become certified because I didn't feel the call to actually practice that as a, as a career choice. You see, so you go off, you learn some stuff and then, you know, you come back on your course. So you impulse to learn, learn, you see. And so that's what it's really about is just being able to follow those impulses. And when I first started my journey, it was to wake up early. It was to, you know, familiarize myself with the law of attraction. And that really brought me so much excitement, so much happiness that I did those things every morning. 
and I started to prioritize that. So then I started to prioritize going to sleep earlier. I started to prioritize making sure I wasn't overeating because I never felt good in my morning if I was overeating and I didn't want to jeopardize my morning time because that was the best time of my day. I wanted to just get my morning, do my morning and then go back to sleep and start all over again. Like that's how good it felt. And so that's what, and then the journey started to progress and then during the day and then you get these insights. Oh, we should do this. We should do that, right? It all just kind of starts to flow. So the name of the game is you don't need to worry about finding or figuring it out or, or searching or efforting. You simply just have to be in the flow of joy or feel joy, feel good, right? And that's connecting your focus to things in life that feel good for you. And if you're having a hard time doing that, it means you have to soothe yourself into alignment. You have to relax, meditation, stop thinking, disconnect, nature, take a bath, shut down. And then when you are in this meditative state, start to energetically or feel out what thought feels the best for you. I really want to move and, 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 and move my children to a better place. Oh, that doesn't feel good. Cause I'm just feeling the lack of that. I haven't done it yet. That doesn't feel good. Okay. How about everything's working out for me? Oh, that feels good. Everything is working out for me. Oh, that feels really good. Okay. Everything is working out for me. Universe will align me with my choices when the time is right. Oh, that feels really good. Oh, oh, divine timing is at play and I will be guided into what's best for me. Oh, that feels good too, right? It's just about reaching for that thought that feels the best. And then you will build momentum and it will be so. Now your angel message for today is life purpose and your angels are saying, the purpose of your life is to serve in a way that brings great joy to yourself and others. Don't worry about finding your purpose. Instead, focus upon serving a purpose and then your purpose will serve you. And that's what it's all about. How I came here today and how I'm sitting in front of you today is because I literally just followed the impulses of spirit of waking up early, reading books, taking notes, and most importantly, recognizing in my own life what I needed to heal within myself. See, the reason why I'm sitting in front of you today is because I probably needed to heal more than any of you. I came from a very broken, shut down, low self-esteem place. And it may not have looked like it from the outside because I was pretty good at covering it. My higher self shone whenever I was under pressure, my higher self came through. But on the inside, I was suffering. On the inside, I was a different person than what I portrayed on the outside, you see. And when I went through this journey and I started realizing, holy moly, I am really, I got a lot of shadow work I need to heal. And it was it wasn't a letdown. It was like, a, okay, well, let's, let's start this journey. And anything that I realized I needed to heal within myself, I realized I didn't have the money I wanted to have. Okay, well, there's a, there's a, there's a block in there. Why, why is that? Okay, maybe it's because I haven't put any attention into it. And then I started writing posters on my wall. Uh, abundance flows to me easily. I am a money, a money magnet. Money uh, comes to me in all ways effortlessly. I started saying these things. I started opening up to it. The more I repeated these things, the more I opened up to it, right? Whatever I wanted, I am a spiritual leader. I am a spiritual goddess. Whatever I wanted to open up in my life, I started repeating these things. I have a strong vocabulary. I am a, a powerful leader. Whatever I wanted to heal, I started saying. I started writing down. And then because I started saying it and writing it down, I was guided into actions and, and other things that allowed me to believe that within myself. I started receiving validation from my outside world because that's what I was saying. It's what I was beginning to feel because I was saying it all the time. And then my outer world was showing me those instances. Like my family would treat me with more respect or, or someone would give me a, do something randomly for me, a nice gift or do something out of the blue that I was like, what the heck? I can't believe they did that. It was a validation of how I was feeling about myself. You see? So we just want that for you. Open that up, follow your joy, focus on you, focus on what you need to heal, heal that with in yourself and the outer world will validate that and you will be guided into your life purpose. We love you so much. We hope you enjoyed your reading. We hope there were messages in here for you. And if there was like, and subscribe, we truly appreciate you. Spirit loves you. I love you. And until our next reading, keep shining, baby.